There are, as I understand, over 17, 18,000 cases now relating to the uniform services pending before various courts and tribunals. Over 90% of the total appeals filed by the Ministry of Defence comprise challenges to disability benefits to soldiers. There's something very wrong with that, uh, that, that set of numbers. Uh, that is clearly not what the MOD should be doing. Um, it is still not very clear to me what the, what the motivation or the almost stubborn refusal to give up this uh, litigation is, what the cause is. I have been told they are concerned about uh, fraud. I'm, I'm told they are concerned about um, some cases of um, you know, fraudulently asking for benefits when they are not, uh, when they are not really um, um, legitimate disabilities. But e even if that be the case, I think there are solutions that uh, can be evolved, for example, like audits. Uh, we just have a blanket um, uh, a directive that there will be no appeals, and, but the MOD can do random audits, statistical checks on whether there is any violation in terms of the benefits versus the reality. If you have the fact recorded uh, at the time of discharge or at the time of the uh, disability being uh, inflicted on the concerned person, if there is a database like that, is it not just easier for this whole uh, issue to get resolved? The objective is to put all of these possible solutions on the table so that we can avoid what is going on, which is this repeated uh, litigation. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the last meeting I had with the RM was very recent, and he has again assured me that this is not his intention, that he wants to try and unknot this. And uh, I think anything that we do to do today or say today or come to a conclusion uh, today will only help maybe help him and help uh, the, the disabled warriors uh, to avoid this, uh, this, this really um, shameful situation that we put them through. What does a soldier do when he is dissatisfied, he has got some grievances, through proper channels he will go and he will explain his case. When he is, that is rejected, he takes recourse to the court. Now when the court listens to everything and grants his plea and he says, yeah, this is what we are giving, and lo and behold, the ministry just puts in an appeal against that what has happened. Where does he go? He does not have that kind of backing, neither legal or financial, to be able to fight the organization. Nobody can. So I think this was one of the main reasons which led uh, Honorable Raksha Mantri to uh, have this, how do we reduce litigation and he constituted this committee. Now, as a committee, we did go into a number of things we uh, looked into. We looked at discipline, vigilance and MS, legal and civil affairs. But the basic crux and the, the immediate initial chapter of our report was for disability benefits. The denial and the rationalization of these. What should we do? What is the real causes of these? And that is what we really looked at at this particular point. Our battle casualties, how you determine them? There is a system, the executive says, the man on the ground that this is a battle casualty, but there is some person sitting inside who's got financial control who says, sorry, this, will not, this is not to be treated as a battle casualty. So somewhere this particular thing has to stop. And this is where our thing which we were trying to highlight. What is more important is to get, get awareness and change attitudes. Attitude towards the veteran. Because I firmly believe it is not only the Department of Ex-Servicemen Welfare or the Welfare Associations who have to look after the cause of the veterans. It is those who are serving today have to look after the cause of the veterans and that is where it lies. It is their bounden responsibility and unless it starts from there, because what can the veteran, he can make a noise, he can go about, he can fight and you know, uh, try, try and speak to people but ultimately that noting which goes from the service headquarters to the ministry and all, that is what matters and the chiefs etc, they are the ones who have to do it. So I think that is one area which we have really got to as far as transparency is concerned uh, and sensitivity is concerned, I can narrate points and uh, you will understand how it feels. Uh, there was a case of an avalanche in 19 Dev in uh, 2010, a platoon post 
there were 18 people on the, on the sentry duty at that point of time. 16 were resting, actually sleeping. When the avalanche came, these 18 people got few seconds warning and they were able to make to safety. The 16 who were sleeping did not have that warning and perished. The Adjutant General Branch declared them as battle casualty. And can you imagine the observation which comes from the PCDA? How can these people be declared as battle casualties when they were sleeping? It pained us. What, uh, it, so this is what I'm saying. The sensitivity, it can only be felt by a man who has gone through it. They were not sleeping there because they were on a picnic. They were people from South India, they were people from North India, Central India, who were there in those heights at the border post. Uh, and resting is part of the routine of a soldier. If you do not give him four hours of rest in 24-hour cycle, he cannot perform. So these things cannot be understood by those who are taking decisions or those who are giving uh, the final thing. And therefore, I am of the strong conviction that the people in the CGDA, that is the PCDA pension, PCDA officers, they should be people from the armed forces. How, if a man, if an army general after commanding a division can be a good EDGPS, why can't he be the PCDA officers or PCDA pensions? If we can take decisions on pension matters in army headquarters, we can also give that. There is no Greek and Roman taught there. And that is not even required. A DGL, many of you will know, a DGL is prepared by the CGDA, who is an accounting office. The DGL comes to the Ministry of Defence, nobody looks at it. They issue the orders after getting financial approval. And then the trouble starts. The PS Directorate, who are responsible for pay and services of the armed forces, they are never given a chance to have a look at it because it is considered as top secret. How? I don't know. If they were given a chance to look at that order before it is issued, all this controversy will stop. The orders of fitment tables that have been issued recently from 1-1-2006 and the orders that are awaited for 33 years of service, they are based on a court order. And the court order stipulates that everybody will be on a minimum of this minimum of this uh, uh, rank. That means pen, pay, pension will be based on the minimum of the rank. Yet, the only service in the whole of the uh, government, civil included, the J ranks are on maximum of the rank. So it should have been immediately the MOD or the PS Directorate to push the MOD to go back to the court and tell them that you have given a wrong order. Because as far as the armed forces are concerned, the JCOs and other ranks are on maximum. And why were they on maximum? Because after the fifth pay commission, when we checked it up as a disabled war veterans, we found that 85% of the JCOs and other ranks and up to captain level did not get their disability or service element. It was reduced by 85%. We gave a chart to the ministry and then is, that is when the uh, rules were changed to maximum of the, of the rank. Disabilities cannot be fake. A person goes through multiple medical boards at the time of categorization when a person is declared low medical category, then recategorization boards, then a release slash invalidating a medical board where many people are examining you. It is, there is no question of any person faking a disability. It is absolutely a myth uh, created by low, lower level officials to fool the competent authorities and, and to create confusion in the minds of uh, the political executive, which now is very strong and which wants to resolve these problems. Litigation is not always a symbol of a sick society. A litigation can also be a symbol of an enlightened society of people who are aware of rights. It is not litigation that we are against. We are against unethical litigation, in fact, unethical appeals by the government. Solutions, the way forward as, as we term it. Number one, no change in rules is required. Rules are totally liberal, the entitlement rules, they are very simple, they are non-complicated, uncomplicated, they simply say any disability which arises in service is deemed to be attributable slash aggravated by service, unless reasons are recorded to the contrary. 
there's a charter of commonly found diseases which are affected by stress and strain of service including hypertension psychosis neurosis which the system tends to ignore in fact interestingly since 1937 even suicide in a high altitude area is treated attributable to service but the system has its eyes closed suicide is never treated attributable by the system because they they feel that these things will get highlighted in the media we cannot hide behind this cloak of secrecy and deny our the deny the due benefits to people there are two concern which i which i could not understand one there is a short service commissioned officer if he gets a disability he has been given disability pension or for that matter there is a confusion also that whether disability pension constitutes service element also or not now somebody who is sitting if he is not even knowledgeable enough he can't even read that means there should be some language check done before making him sit on that chair that pension itself means service element plus the disability element how can you differentiate and give him only disability pension means disability element service element has been taken back most of the time under general sabarwal all those cases where it was released the amount has been recovered so somebody like him i i all must mention take a pause at must mention here that when a person like him can be empathetic and he is the one who changed my track record he is the one who met me once in golf course and i somebody introduced me to him been only given the service, uh, disability element service element is not given why a cadet who is there in the training academy if you are choose, chosen him you have chosen him to fight out for the country if he gets injured there nothing has been given to him so we in the committee have recommended all such things and we are very hopeful because raksha mantri is actually taking the top down approach and he perhaps in the time to come maybe in in a matter of month or so you will see something coming down percolating down and changes happening